personal question, uh, how do you feel on your first day at Clark? So I was pretty excited, pretty comfortable. I'm really independent, so I, I didn't feel weird about moving out or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I felt really excited. Um, I'm a transfer student, so yeah. I had gone to a bigger school. Probably excited, but mostly just scared, anxious. But I was excited in the sense of like getting to know new people, both my age and older. Yeah, and a new type of education. So Clark was new, and I thought it would be very exciting to go to a brand new school that people didn't really know very much about, and I just decided that that's what I would do. And I thought, well, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to see the dean, that's for sure. <laughs> How many years do you think did it take Clark to accept women undergraduates? I should know this because I'm a history major concentrating in women's studies. Probably 15 years. 15, 20 years? Nope, 55 years. Oh my god. They didn't accept uh, women until uh, 1942. Wow. Yep. This is immense. Just school kidding. For 55 years. Yeah. That's so sad. What's interesting about Clark, which, and this is kind of a myth, that the reason why Clark ended up going co ed wasn't so much a result of the war, but was a result of the Depression. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I mean, that to me was, right. was you know, because you, you would think, oh, you opened up in 42 was because, because, you know, the men were all going off to war and they needed to fill the classrooms, but that wasn't true. They started um, pursuing the idea of opening the doors for women in the late 30s. Right. And, and it was really because they couldn't afford to, to keep the school going. Right. And Especially what was also interesting, schools. too, um, was the fact that you know the big issue was whether or not Jonas Clark's will would allow women to come, and the fear was if they allowed women to come, then his endowment would basically be pulled from the university. So you know there was a whole legal thing that they had to go through, and what the end result was is that they would allow women in, but none of the funds from the Jonas Clark endowment could be used to for fund the for the women. Yeah. And, yeah. Which was interesting, and then what was even more interesting is that there was a student who was here who did his honors thesis about the economics of Clark University through the ages, and there was a page about the 1940s, and there was a grid, and he showed how the men's college was operating in the red, however, the women's college was operating in the black, so they were using the funds from the women's college to fund the men's college, even though the women's college was not allowed to use any of the funds from the men's college. if you were part of this first class of women uh, coming to a school where you may not be welcome? It's absolutely horrible. Probably a little um, self-conscious about how I dressed, how I talked, where I ate and what I did. Uh, definitely anxious coming into an environment that was predominantly um, just male-focused and the patriarchal epitome of, of higher education. Yeah. What was it like that first week? When they were oh, on geez. campus, oh, what was it? What was your reaction, oh. and what was some of the other males' reactions? Varied, <laughs> varied reactions. Uh, <laughs> to me, uh, it was ecstatic. I, I felt uh, privileged uh, to see this happen. Uh, we dressed differently. Uh, you we, did. We, oh yeah, uh, we 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 uh, boost up and. Uh, uh, dressed well, <laughs> trying to shine, and and and, uh, and all of that, and um, I, uh, I, as I, I really didn't know what to make of it all. I, I was kind of in awe of of it, and uh, but I knew that there was uh, the other side of this. It was very obvious to me that uh, some of the uh, professors and students 
uh, had a different perspective, uh, and I, uh, I've read about that. So I knew that uh, uh, some thought of it as sort of a um, change in the camp was not necessary for the good. No, we were just people. All of them were in it together, boys and girls. Right, so you didn't feel a lot of resistance. <laughs> we did <laughs> There was only one faculty member who was really very unhappy to see girls. The rest of them, okay. So they were fine? Yeah. This faculty member was older. He had gone through all, all, all young men only. And I got, he, was a, you know, he was a Harvard graduate in those days. And Harvard was... Harvard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think I, I see it more in retrospect. Than, I don't think we paid that much attention to it when we were there. We'd, we were there, we were girls, we paid our money, we went to class, and if we're lucky, we were made bees, and if we were lucky and studied, we might get some A's. Yeah. <laughs> It was a big deal, but we didn't realize it was such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just, they just thought, you know, everyone's going to college, and we're going to college too. So we went, but we also realized that we were um, unusual mm. because they would, they kept saying the girls' college, the girls' college. Is expanding. We're taking more girls now. We and you know, and I'm thinking, what is so great about the girls? And then I realized they were the first. It was the first year. Mm. They were first way w women went to Clark. I think mostly, mostly just self-conscious. I feel like it probably wasn't very appropriate for women to go out. Oh my goodness. I mean, I would have just felt so paranoid because I would feel like everything I was doing was under a microscope, that I had to be perfect all the time just so I could prove myself, prove that I belonged. this before and, and other um, women in that time period, you mm -hmm. know, first coming to Clark, that there was just a lot of physical activities, as you say. There was swimming. swimming. There was what? Uh, and there was rowing. Rowing. For those that wanted to do the rowing. You know, Which is not. unusual. <laughs> there was archery. Yeah. Uh, let's see, there was uh, volleyball, basketball. Uh, I don't think, there might have been softball, but I never participated. Yeah. I don't yeah. think we ever did that. Right. No. And there was some sort of calisthenics or... Oh, yeah. We, every, uh, we were required uh, once or twice a week to go down in the gym there and for calisthenics, marching, uh, all kinds of things, you know. So I had a good idea for a program when I went to teach with them. Right. We didn't have any sports at all. And so we started uh, asking if we could have a place to practice basketball. And it just so happened that someone by the name of Hazel Hughes was a graduate student, had come in with the women that year, and she had been a coach. And so she said to the administration that she would coach us if they allowed us to use the room downstairs with all the pillars. And so we started. So I was fast and I had a bookshop. So I played basketball first thing the first year. Second year I played second straight because we had some taller girls come in and they were more proficient and you know but we played Rutgers, Simmons, Wellesley, our lady Gilms and I can't remember one more and we beat them all and uh, how about Radcliffe? Radcliffe. Radcliffe was yeah they were the ones that couldn't believe that these hillbillies came and beat them 
and we beat them well. You know, like ten, fifteen pounds of course. They didn't know what happened to them. But we were fortunate. We had we had some girls that were very, very good. You know. So. You were in your gym suit. What yeah. did to walk across the campus? Yes. What did you have to do? We had to put on a, 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 a clothes. You know, you couldn't walk across in your shorts. <laughs> you had to put on clothes. Oh my goodness, so. It's great. <laughs> Cups, international relation, uh, and uh, I think in the debating society yeah. as well, which I was very active in. Uh, there, there were there were some uh, women. I don't, my just impression is that they they seem to mold into it. We had different different kinds of things going on. You did theater. You were Portia yeah. and the Merchant of Venice. Yeah. So wasn't that there was, a theater that group? That was a big thing I was in, Karen, was mm -hmm. theater, yeah. And that's the first time that they had women actually play the roles of uh, yes, women, right? Yes, because they, they used to go outside and get <laughs> women. And yeah. so the women were really kind of annoyed that they weren't called on anymore. Were there a lot of dances at Clark or nearby? Oh yeah, well, there was always a school dancer. I mean, not I don't know, I don't remember. I don't think it was every week, but there, right. were, there were like maybe well, one of the sororities would have a dance, and then maybe one there'd be two school dancers, fall and spring, and those are the school dances. Mm -hmm. And then there, there were the other dances that were they were small ones. It was all at Clark. Yeah. yeah. I didn't uh, go anywhere else. It was Clark students, and we would uh, think about what we wanted to do, and we'd do it. It was um, mostly individuals. Shall we do this, or shall we do that, or... They were... Uh, we just all knew each other. And nobody asked any questions. I can remember one spree day, we got bags of water, and we went up to the top floor of, of what's the first? Jonas, huh? Jonas Clark? Jonas G. Yeah, yeah, Clark. Up to the top, we could get, in those days we could walk around, there was, the, the top floor was still sort of an attic. Mm. And the windows looked down, right down the line, and we had bags of water. And around spree day, sometimes you, you, you couldn't quite hold those bags, they fell out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfect. <laughs> that, should, that should be reinstated. Yes. <laughs> we only did that once. I mean, we... We managed to get away with it, but I wouldn't think it would happen again. But that, I think, is my one of my real fun nights. But Spree Day was, oh, we had, we, we danced. It's a, it was a different world than you know. What do you think Clark owes to these first class of women? Oh, so much. Just, you know, I think women finding their way into institutions of higher education in general just paved the way for us to be here at all and I think you know it's so great because I think women have such a strong place at Clark now and I'm just glad that they kind of opened the door for that. Our acceptance and our understanding of other minorities or people who have been discriminated against deserve more acknowledgement and recognition. I think we owe them a huge huge thank you and um, I commend them for their bravery and their courage, so yeah. Why should students now be interested, you know, in these past 
experiences of women at Clark um, and, you know, students at Clark. And, I mean, if you look at uh, Dylan, times are changing. I really see the times in the 40s when women first came, the times in the 60s when I was here, and the times now with a lot of turmoil, change, social change. Um, there, there is a link. I mean, you know, uh, if you look at the history, those generations are sharing a similar experience. Yeah. And so that's why I think that students should take a look. Take a look at how change was handled. How did Clark students handle that change, male and female, in the 40s, you know, during the 60s, and now? So I think, you know, it's a history lesson. And I was a science major, and all of a sudden <laughs> I'm interested in history. <laughs> I was a math major, and I've never spent so much time in the library yes. until this project. So you have, yes. <laughs> and I'm a history major, and I'm here, so yes. yes. Full circle. Yes. So there, are, you know, there, are, there, are, there are parallels mm -hmm. in all of these situations that, you know, students should be interested in. And I think, from my perspective, you know, through this project, I've gotten to meet some fantastic people. Yes, and made Definitely. some new fantastic friendships. Makes me proud to be a Clarkie. Ditto.